You know, folks, I, I haven't always been a fan of requiring drug tests for people on welfare. And at the time, uh, you know, my thinking was basically that we are singling out people for nothing other than their poverty. And I didn't feel that that was a good cause to uh, require someone to take a drug test. You know, if there was probable cause or something, then that made sense. But then, you know, employers started doing it and it became more and more common. And I started to look at the problem a little bit differently because here we are, a lot of people who have substance abuse problems, whether that's alcohol or other forms of drugs, and they're going on government aid and they're getting that government aid and maybe they had social problems and because of that they have a, a mental health issue. And we're paying their public assistance and not lifting them out of their poverty. And the system itself wasn't geared in such a way that it would pressure people to do just that. So we need to make some changes to how the system works. And frankly, at this time, it's just not sufficient. But now, you know, when it comes to people who smoke, well, you know, I'm sorry. You know, you, you, you are there smoking. You're welcome to do that. But if you get Medicaid and uh, your health habits could cause the, the cost of Medicaid to rise, uh, then I have no problem imposing some consequences on you, telling you that maybe you need to pay more. And if you can afford that cigarette and all those other things you do, well, maybe you can afford to pay a little bit in more to your Medicaid uh, if you want those benefits. So I have nothing against uh, telling people that they have to do that. You know, when I had... Uh, uh, private insurance, and I have private insurance now, but at one time there was a plan that was made available to me where I had a choice. Don't smoke or smoke, but if you smoke, you pay more of a health care premium. Those were my options. And if that's what they do to me with private insurance, well, why not do it to people on Medicaid? And you say, well, they're low-income people, and so I understand that. But if they can afford cigarettes, then they can afford to pay premiums for their insurance. So, you know, then we have this, this other thing where uh, we have people who are uh, doing it in public housing. And now some people are saying, oh, this is a violation of my civil rights. You know, folks, I, every place I've rented, the landlords have always said, you can't smoke here. Yet I paid without government assistance to buy the right to stay in that place. And yet I was told I couldn't smoke, and of course I didn't smoke anyway. But, you know, you take these multifamily buildings and you've got more than just one family that lives in them. And it is a fire hazard. You could literally um, create a full structure fire in which more than one family is affected by a bad decision. So I have nothing against telling people they cannot smoke in, in, in a public building. Not only that, we taxpayers help fund these properties and the building of these properties and the maintenance of these properties. And I don't think we should be responsible for the damage that people who smoke cause. So if they want to smoke, let them go outside. Let them find someplace else to do that. But in the building, uh, no, you know. I don't see it as a civil rights violation because you don't have a right to live in that property. It is a special thing that the American people do for you. It is a privilege. Well, I hope you disagree. hope you don't disagree. I don't know. It's your choice. Thanks so much.